the organizer for inviting me to present my work. And uh, I am going to, um, I'm going to uh, talk about the non-equilibrium dynamics of RNA packaging in, uh, in vir viral capsids. So let me first uh, present the viral system that I, I use. So this is the CCMV, which is a, a plant virus with a capsid T equal 3, <coughs> comprising 90 uh, dimers, which I will call subunits. The diameter is about 28 nanometer. And the genome is made of about 3,000 nucleotides per particles. So the, the capsid is made of these uh, proteins, which are, I depict like this. I should have represented maybe one subunit, but this is one protein with here hydrophobic patches, hydrophobic sites, and the, the body is negatively charged, which can, can be tuned by the pH, and the flexible arms is actually cationic and makes the interaction with the genome. So you have actually uh, two types of interaction. You have the protein-protein interaction, which is controlled by this hydrophobic interaction, which is attractive, and the, the electrostatic repulsion, which is controlled by the pH. And, by, and this um, subunit genome interaction, which is uh, controlled by the flexible arm, which is cationic. Interestingly, we can uh, draw a phase diagram of this, uh, of this virus. So here, this is the phase diagram for empty capsids. Uh, at physiological pH, you can uh, get only subunits free in solution. When you lower the pH to pH about 5, spontaneously, the subunits self-assemble, and you end up with uh, empty capsids. In, uh, if you lower the salinity, you can get other structures like tubes and multi wall shells. In the presence of genomes, uh, Gelbart's group in particular have studied the encapsidation of RNA inside these uh, capsids. And they observe interesting things, especially at physiological pH. When they have a high salt concentration, PA, um, subunits and genome do not interact very strongly, but when they lower the pH, when they lower the salinity, they get these complexes which are made of subunits bound to the RNA, but it does not close up. You don't have uh, real viral particles. You just have uh, amorphous complexes. When you lower the pH at this low salinity, you get a really full vi virus and with the, the RNA fully encapsidated inside the, inside the shells. So it's, it's interesting but because it shows you that you can actually control this interaction, the subunit-subunit interaction through the pH and the subunit genome interaction through the salinity so it can help you to understand a little bit better how the, 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 the virus can be formed and can be assembled. So this is particularly interesting to study the dynamics. So this is the topics of my talk. The dynamics, and I will exploit this, um, this interesting feature for, the, for this system. So in terms of dynamics, two pathways, mainly pathways, have been identified, especially by numerical simulation in the Mike's Eigen groups. Here you have this cooperative pathway, and here the nucleation and growth. In the cooperative pathway, you mix the subunit with the genome. With, here, this is more a polyelectrolyte. The subunits bind very quickly to the polyelectrolyte. And uh, in, uh, later on, the, the, the complex actually uh, reorganize slowly and uh, make a full virus with a closed shell. In the nucleation and growth, it's a little bit different. The subunits self-assemble between with uh, each other, and at the same time, it package the, the polyelectrolyte inside. And what controls these two pathways, kinetic pathways, is actually precisely the interaction between subunit-subunit and subunit genome. 
In this cooperative pathway, you have a strong subunit genome interaction while compared to the subunit-subunit interaction. So that, that's why the, the subunit likes to bind first to the polyelectrolyte and then reorganize and make a closed chain. In this nucleation and growth pathway, the subunit-subunit interaction is much stronger than the, the, sub, the subunit polyelectrolyte. That's why the shell will form first and package at the same time uh, the, the, the polyelectrolyte. So my goal is precisely to study this kinetic pathways and to find whether we can identify for the CCMV uh, any of this, uh, of this pathway by controlling precisely, as I said, with the pH and the salinity, the, the, the interaction between the two components. <clears throat> More precisely, I try to uh, identify, as I said, the mechanism and the composition and the structure of the intermediate which are formed along the kinetic pathway. By composition, I mean how many subunits are bound to the genome as a function of time and what is the structure, the size of this, uh, this intermediate, these complexes. And very, uh, also, more interestingly, what are the time scale, the typical time scale over which the process takes place. To do so, I use a small angle scattering technique. So may, you might not be all familiar with it. Basically, you have a sample, you uh, have an incident, uh, you illuminate your sample with a wave, which can be X-ray or neutron in my case, the wave is scattered, and you collect on a detector the scattered intensity as a function of scattering angle, theta here. More uh, practically, we use this, uh, the wave number Q, which is closely related to the scattering uh, wave number. So we do our experiment on the large scale facilities, synchrotron and the nuclear reactor here because we need a high flux, uh, high brilliance to be able to detect, to have a decent signal to noise, ra to noise ratio. So I must uh, also um, emphasize that uh, these experiments take some time because we have only usually a few days of experiment per year so you need to prepare carefully your samples and uh, then you take a lot of time to analyze the thousands of, uh, of data. And if you make a mistake, you have to go back again to, the, to this large scale facility in six months or maybe one year later. So just to show you the kind of data we, we get uh, by these techniques, here I plotted the intensity, the scattering intensities as a function of the wave number in logarithmic scale. So the first information is the intensity at very low Q values, which is basically proportional to the squared volume of the object. So when you measure the intensity here, you can get somehow the volume of the object and you can get, for example, the composition if you know the, for example, you have an assembly of subunits, you know the volume of one subunit, so you can estimate how many subunits are in your assemblies. The second information is the radius of gyration, which is the global size of your objects, and which is given by this approximation, valid only for very small Q values. Here in black, you have an object with a smaller radius of gyration than uh, in blue and the red. It's, uh, the, it's given by actually the curvature of the curve. And uh, the, the rest of the curve tells, gives you information on the structure. Here, for example, a polymer, you have a, in log log, you have a straight line because you have no particular structure. And uh, for a sphere, you have this uh, large oscillation which tells you that you have a high symmetry in your, in your object. Uh, we performed already time resolve studies on empty capsid. So basically, we mix the subunits with uh, a buffer solution which lower the pH or increase the salinity and spontaneously the, the capsid actually self assembled we, we collect these uh, scattering intensities as a function of time and we can compute, we can develop algorithms that allows us to extract 
the structural information of the intermediate by assuming a certain kinetic model. So we did, we did it, for example, with the norovirus capsids, <coughs> where we identified an important intermediate. Here we start from three dimers in solution, and very fast we have this intermediate made of two pentamers of dimers, which actually uh, finished slowly in the, uh, in the empty capsids. We studied also the disassembly of CCMV capsids. We start from uh, full empty capsids, and we, we uh, observe that the capsid break in two pieces, two big pieces, maybe almost half a capsid, and these two pieces break in two smaller pieces made of 16 dimers, about, uh, roughly, and then uh, we end up with uh, three dimers in solution. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we start from uh, pH 5, we increase the pH to 7.5 and uh, the, we kept the salinity, high salinity and uh, 0 0.5 molar of uh, salinity and pH 7.5. Yes, yes, raise the pH, right. correct. So what happens in the presence of genome? Uh, just to recall that this is a subunit, a dimer, which has these flexible arms which are cationic and which makes the interaction with the genome. So the first experiment we did was at, uh, in static at an equilibrium by uh, neutron scattering. The advantage of neutron scattering is when you uh, work at here 68% of heavy water, you can contrast match the signal coming from the genome. So you only see the signal coming from the subunit, from the capsid. So at pH 7.5, I recall that the subunit-subunit interaction is weak. And at high salinity, uh, we have uh, basically noise, so we don't observe any signal. But when we lower the salinity, we see a scattering curve like this, which tells us that the subunits have somehow assembled. So the, the, the schematic here shows what happens. The electrostatic interactions are actually screened at 0.5 molar, so we expect no subunits bound to the RNA, or at least not, nothing detectable. When we lower the, the, the salinity, the subunits bind to the, the genome. And we can, more importantly, we can estimate how many uh, subunits are bound to, to each RNA molecule uh, from the I0. And in this case, we can estimate that the mean number of the subunits per RNA is 75, plus a large error uncertainty, which is due to the error of experimental error of measurements. And also, you must recall that, uh, I didn't say it, perhaps, that the genome is made of four segments of RNA. So I have included this uh, polydispersity into the uh, uncertainties of uh, so you cannot deduce the range of duration at high salt, right, from these things? Yeah, no. But I saw that in polymer physics with neutron scattering, you are able to get the range. Why is that not possible? No, but because here I don't detect, I should detect the subunits alone, right? But this is in the noise. The, the, the signal is not strong enough to get, a, to get a decent signal in this case. That's why I couldn't uh, obtain anything. But when the subunit self assemble, yes, I have a signal, and I could deduce something. But in principle, of course, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, possible. What happens uh, in, uh, in dynamics? Uh, so I do it by X-ray scattering this time. Huh? This is uh, X-ray, so I get a much better signal. So here you see actually the number, the average number of subunits per uh, genome, per uh, molecules, RNA molecules, and you can see that the subunits bind very quickly to uh, each RNA molecule. In the 100 milliseconds, everything is uh, almost finished. I mean, uh, we have about 75 um, dimers, uh, subunits per genome, per RNA molecules, and it does not change for, uh, for tens of minutes. But in, in contrast, here you have the radius of gyration of the, of the object, which is uh, shown here. And uh, you can see that it evolves still uh, more slowly than the, the, the binding of subunits. 
by exponential, by fitting exponential decays, you can estimate that the binding time, typical binding time is 28 milliseconds, but for the relaxation of these complexes, the structural relaxation, it's about 48 seconds, three order of magnitude higher. And uh, <coughs> so it tells us that the binding uh, time scale is smaller than the structural time scale, so the, the subunits bind very quickly to the, the, the RNA, and then in a second time, it relaxes more slowly, it reorganizes. Uh, probably subunit, subunit will bind to each other, but in a much longer time scale. So it, it will definitely follow um, something like a cooperative assembly mechanism, as I uh, shown initially uh, in the introduction. Yes, uh, it's um, the magic ratio, six. <laughs> the, this is the mass ratio between uh, protein and RNA. Uh, yes, I can see Yes, we did it with um, precisely different uh, mass ratio. The uh, rho, we did the subunit to genome mass ratio, so from two to uh, seven. And uh, here I represented uh, the number of subunits bound to RNA at, uh, at long time scale, so close to equilibrium, hopefully. So I can deduce uh, equilibrium constant, which is also uh, related to the critical concentration above which the complex can be formed. So here I found something like uh, 11 micromolar. So typically, in my experiment, I worked at 20, 24 micromolar, so I, I am uh, twice um, higher than the uh, critical concentration. And we can estimate the binding energy, which is about 7 kT, which is actually surprisingly lower, uh, low for me. Uh, I expected a much stronger interaction between of, uh, electrostatics. And to illustrate a little bit further this weak binding, this weak interaction between proteins and uh, RNA, we did this experiment. We start from complexes, these complexes, and we dilute them uh, two times. And by di upon dilution, we can see that the average number of subunits bound to RNA decrease from 75 to uh, 57, if I remember well. And it decreases slowly in the 204 seconds, typical uh, time scale. So the complexes, upon dilution, the complexes just release the subunit into the, the solution. So the binding, uh, so the entropy has a strong role in this, um, has a strong role in the, the, in the formation of the complexes, and they exchange subunit with the bulk solution. Two, two times, yeah, we, we dilute twice. Uh, here, the radius of gyration uh, did not change significantly. Uh, yes, it, it was just to show that by molecular dynamic simulation, we try to compute the conformation of the subunits, and we observe that actually the flexible arm could perhaps actually uh, fold under the, um, under the body of the, the dimers, which reduce actually the dipole moment and uh, which can somehow explain why the interaction is, uh, is smaller than uh, I, I expected initially. <coughs> Regarding the kinetics, we have here an experiment where I have, uh, I have tried to fit a kinetic model here where a complex with n subunits uh, react with one subunit and end up with a complex with n plus one subunit. We have this reaction constant K plus and K minus. If the process is purely diff diffusion limited, K plus will be uh, given by this uh, equation with R the size of a complex and D the diffusion coefficient. So by fitting the experimental data, we find this coef diffusion coefficient, which is actually two order of magnitude smaller than what uh, molecular dynamic simulation gives. So the process is not fully diffusion limited. And we can imagine that when the, the um, subunit binds to the, to, to the RNA, uh, at certain point there are too many subunits and there is a barrier to, to, to cross to bind more subunits. So this is what gives this apparent diffusion coefficient uh, smaller than the 
purely uh, free diffusion of uh, subunits. What about the relaxation to a fully assembled variant? So we start from these complexes and we lower the pH rapidly. So this is depicted here. In that case, the process is uh, much smaller. The binding time is about three, almost one hour. So it evolves from 75 to here after one hour in 84, I think, I remember, uh, subunits. In this case, this is at room temperature. So the binding is slow. The radius of gyration do not evolve very significantly. But if we look at closely the form factor of the object, uh, here I have represented the form factor, <coughs> and I, I have just shown a, a part of the form factor. In blue and, uh, and uh, sorry, in red and black, this is the experimental form factor of the complex that evolved as a function of time, and you see it, that the oscillation is actually becomes more and more clear. In blue, this is the form factor of a solution of pure virus. So we see that uh, it tends to converge via the form factor of a pure solution of virus. So the size of the complexes is already very close to virus, uh, so virus form factor. We have already almost the structure of the virus, so the, the complex must have some piece of shell which are already formed and uh, little by little the shell must uh, close up to form the, the full virus, so we are very close to, to it. And to compute the, the rapidity of the process, I plotted here the, form, the, the value of the form factor at this, uh, at this wave number as a function of time, and you can see that the structural reorganization of the object actually takes something like 3,000 seconds, almost the binding time scales. So in this case, the binding time scale is, very, is close to the structural time scale, so I would guess that we have something like a nucleation growth mechanism, meaning that the complexes capture subunits and at the same time, they slowly reorganize to make a fully assembled virus, so virus particles. If that's the case, would you expect to see coexistence of two types of populations? Uh, what? If it is first, if it's nucleation and growth. Never. Okay. <laughs> we did it at several temperatures, from 10 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. So I plotted here the logarithm. Uh, of um, binding time scale as a function of the inverse of the temperature. And uh, I try, my goal was to try to estimate some activation energy uh, controlling the process of this uh, relaxation. And uh, I could estimate an activation energy which is actually something like 20 kT, T0 is the room temperature again, 20 kT which is rather high, I would say. <coughs> so we have, um, we have uh, activation energy which is uh, quite high and it, 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 ex it explains why the, um, the, the process is, is slow and when we actually do the experiment at 40 degrees Celsius, it's, uh, we end up almost with, um, with assembled particles. Just to give you some images of the, the species we observe by cryo-electron microscopy, so uh, we have seen that before, I think. Uh, at pH 7.5, when we mix subunits and RNA, we have this uh, aggregate, these complexes, which have no particular structure, amorphous uh, complexes. When we lower the pH, we end up with these uh, spherical particles. And here I show just a three-dimensional reconstruction of the, um, the complexes from the form factor that I measured by X-ray. And here I compared with the crystal structure of the CCMV capsid. You can see that this uh, aggregate, these complexes are a little bit bigger, but uh, they are maybe slightly more elongated. But the size is already quite comparable with the size of, of a virus particle. The last uh, experiment was with um, 
Synthetic polyelectrolyte, PSS, which is a flexible polyelectrolyte negatively charged. <clears throat> in that case, uh, very interestingly, I, I find, at least me, I find it very interesting, is that at pH 7.5, we, we have already uh, spherical particles. We mix PSS with subunits and we end up with spherical particles. Why? Avec, with RNA, remember, we have only this uh, amorphous complexes. So we have these spherical particles. And uh, the kinetics show, so I did not have time to, the, the work is uh, unfinished. Huh? So, so I did not have time to compute the number of subunits bound to the, the polyelectrolyte. So I show you here directly I0. So I computed the binding time scale, which is 42 milliseconds, so very fast also. The subunit binds very fast to the polyelectrolyte. For RNA, it was 28, so it's quite comparable. And the radius of generation evolved uh, more slowly than the binding time scale. I found 3.1 seconds. But anyway, it's faster than with RNA. RNA was uh, 48 seconds, if I remember, it's, uh, 10 times more. <coughs> so we have in this case, again, a cooperative assembly mechanism. But in this case, the subunits bind quickly to the, to the polyelectrolyte. And also, I said slowly, it's reorganized, but it's, quite, it's anyway quite fast. And I mean, in, in 10 seconds, in, let's say in one minute, the, the particles are formed and the process do, do not evolve uh, significantly. Uh, and this is probably due because, to the fact that the polyelectrolyte has, first it's very flexible and it has a hydrophobic backbone. So it collapses on itself uh, much more easily than the DRNA. So it helps the process, it helps to, uh, to, to form the capsid and uh, to maintain it uh, quite stable. To summarize, uh, so the binding energy between subunit and genome is moderate. Uh, I found about 7 kT, so I expected something higher, but uh, uh, obviously when you dilute, the subunits are released, and uh, this can be probably explained by the fact that the, the, the Ah, the dipole moment is actually low in this case, and the, the overall subunit is negatively charged. Uh, the complexes are formed by a cooperative mechanism. The subunits bind to the RNA and relaxes slowly to uh, this complex. And uh, the relaxation into uh, vir virion is, uh, is, um, follows a nucleation growth mechanism, <coughs> meaning that the complexes capture the subunit and at the same time they're organized into a fully assembled virus. In the case of polyelectrolyte, we can form uh, capsids uh, with a low subunit subunit interaction thanks to the, the the, ah, how to say, <laughs> thanks to the, the, the hydrophobicity of the polyelectrolyte. And again, it's formed by a cooperative mechanism. So I try to summarize all this on a diagram. So this is maybe preliminary. So here I plot the number of subunit-subunit contact, which is driven by the interaction between them, controlled by the pH, the polymer hydrophobicity, I would say. And here the, sub, the number of subunit genome contacts and uh, which is also controlled by uh, the salinity and the polymer charge, of course, in this case. <coughs> so as I said, so you can imagine on this diagram a free energy landscape, which will somehow control the kinetics and uh, which uh, tells us uh, the, the, the equilibrium state of your system. So when you uh, travel on this axis, you have initially a diffusion-limited process the subunits bind very quickly to the, uh, to the RNA, but at some point it becomes reaction limited because you have already a lot of subunit on the RNA, so it's uh, somehow crowded. And on this direction, you have definitely a reaction limited process, which is slow, and uh, which accounts for the uh, relaxation of the complexes into a fully assembled vir virus. Here you have uh, Nucleation, the cooperative assembly and nucleation growth mechanism are uh, more in this direction. 
So let me thank the, the contributor of this work, especially Maëlle-Anne Chevreuil and Jigzi Chen, who are a PhD student with me, Doru Constantin and Mehdi Zegal, who are uh, colleagues with whom we do a lot of uh, X-ray scattering and uh, neutron scattering. Stéphane Bressanelli is a virologist with whom I, I work, and uh, I have a lot of feedback regarding the, the, the structure of the virus and the, the and, uh, um, and the mechanism that comes into play. The large-scale facilities, ESRF uh, in Grenoble for X-ray scattering, and uh, LLB in Saclay for neutron scattering. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>